Good morning. Good okay, tov. A good vach to everybody. Shavua tov. And welcome to mystical teachings from the Tanya. Ooh, what's going on here? Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zichin Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Oh, a little challenge over here. How come I don't see all the posts? Hmm. I don't see all the comments that are coming up. That's a little unusual. So give me a moment. I'll have to do something uh, to get this going. Sorry, a moment, folks. Oh, all right. There we go. Okay. So we're a good to Shavua Tov, a good week to everybody. Thank you for joining on Facebook, on Clubhouse, on Instagram. We have uh, Vilma, Sina, Marcy, Gabriel, Aviva. We have uh, Mon Voyage, Violet, and Michelle. Um, we have Atfab that with us, Linda, Liba, and Davida in New York. Good morning and welcome. Uh, Tim from Texas, Shavua Tov. Andrew is with us from Springfield, New Jersey. Good morning, and good morning to Irma in St. Martin, Manuela in Germany. Good afternoon. Rina is with us in Colorado. And um, Pacho, oh, I hope I pronounced that right. Shalom. Uh, TJ, I've talked to you in Melbourne. Clem in Brisbane, good evening. Andrea is with us in Phoenix. Uh, Galice, shalom, good morning. Daisy in Jerusalem. In the holy city welcome michael is with us in germany good afternoon uh, zuska i hope i pronounced that right like zis which means sweet i don't know if that's what it means in whatever language boker tov lisa in england welcome a weeks is in the philippines with us welcome michelle good week to you cindy in florida welcome tony welcome welcome to you gina in calgary when it's snowy in Calgary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's something. Deborah, good morning to you in Kitchener, Ontario. Snowing there too? No, probably not. Uh, Deborah. Uh, in Florida, welcome. Leanna in Montreal, la good voch. And um, who else is with us? Uh, Deborah. And, okay, wonderful. All right, folks, today's class, since it's a Sunday, so we do the Shabbos class and then we go into the Sunday class, a double header, shall we say. Okay. Give me a moment. Clean my uh, glasses. And... Let us get into the heart of discussion here. In chapter 44, we're speaking about two types of love. One is that God is my very life because he's my very soul. My soul that gives, animates my body. My body really wants the soul to animate it, give it life. So if we're in tune with our soul, we really want to be attached and not be disconnected from God because he is our very life. Furthermore, another type is that we are like a child and God is our father. And just like a child is ready to give up their lives, metaphorically at least, <laughs> I hope it's not just an idea, but you know, for their 
mother and father because their mother and father is more dear to them than life itself. So likewise, there's this concept of doing for God because to attach to God is more dear than life itself. So doing a mitzvah, like we're doing now, studying Torah, learning Tanya, is that when we have the mindfulness, the, 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 um, the awareness that this is more important than life itself, meaning, meaning that I'm ready to put aside and just uh, and to to sacrifice and what that means in in these terms is i want to give god the divine gratification and that's more valuable than any other thing that i can do and accomplish um more than life itself so that's what we explained till now so now the elder Rebbe takes this that these two categories of love right that he is my true life and he is my father um, that I am ready to do for entirely. So <clears throat> these two notions are an inherent. Oh, what happened to Instagram? We lost it. Okay. These two notions or these two types of love are an inheritance to us. What does it mean it's an inheritance? It means it's something that's a given. It's not something that we're achieving, so to speak, on our own. We're not achieving this on our own, these two types of love. We are achieving it or, or, or revealing something that's there in our soul. In other words, that God is my very life and that he is my father. That is a, an, is um, very much a part of the makeup of the soul. Therefore, I want to be totally connected and, and I don't want to be disconnected at any time. Which, by the way, that's the idea of love and fear, that the fear is part of the love. Because you want the attachment, you don't want to be disattached. You don't want to be disconnected, torn away. Um, at all, because it's being torn away from life, as being the source of life, it's being torn away from your father, right? So therefore, it's called a natural love. Now, even though it's a a natural love, or a, or a um, what's the word, uh, an inheritance, that's the nature of the soul. Yet, if we contemplate meditate and and from that awareness brings actually to a feeling in the heart where we have a real sense of it and if you recall we learned in chapters uh 38 39 40 that love and awe are the two wings that allow our mitzvah to ascend on high so in a mitzvah there is the divine connection that we make through the act of the mitzvah with the intention with the love and 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 fear right the fear of disconnect we our mitzvah not only are we bound up with god here but they ascend to the divine so if it you're propelled by an awareness that brings it to your heart then it will go to the world of bria to the world of divine comprehension because of your divine comprehension your comprehension route rather that brought it into a palpable feeling in the heart from the mind to the heart then it will propel with wings to the world of bria if though you are 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 just mindful of this right you're aware you think it but you but it doesn't bring you to a feeling in the heart that's okay it still is divine because the very fact that we we contemplate the thought we meditate upon it that God is my life, that God is my, my father. The very fact that we do that in the act of doing the mitzvah like we're doing right now, studying of Torah, it will propel the mitzvah with wings to the divine in the world of Yitzhira, the world of formation, which is the world of divine emotion, which is uh, the instinct. In other words, our natural instinct is being... Um, 
of, of that attachment is being thought of. And even though it's not bringing again to any real feeling in the heart, that's okay. That's amazing. It still has an eternity to it. It still has something eternal to it. It rises up to the world of Yitzira. Now, so at the same time, though, these two loves, even though, you know, you need some kind of mindful awareness, you need to think it, right, minimally, and therefore arises above, yet it has a quality as a gift from above, as we said, it's an inheritance. And what that means that it's a gift from above it has a quality that's gifted from the world of Atsilos. So we said that if you're, it can propel with our contemplation, if it brings to an actual feeling in the heart, that it will propel itself uh, with wings to the world of Bria. And without that, then just because we have a mental awareness and we have a sense of that truth, that God is my very life, my very soul, he is my father, and even though I don't really feel it palpably in my heart, that's fine. But the fact is that I'm, I, I, I'm aware of that truth. I think it, and so goes the world of Yitzira. But at the same time, there has another quality to it. It has a quality of avaraba, of this magnanimous, uh, wondrous love that comes as a gift from above. Because in a sense, it is a gift because it's an inheritance. And what it means that it's a gift it means it comes from the world of Atsilos, the world of emanation, which is not a world of creation. It's beyond creation. So what comes out of these two loves have something very powerful about them. They both have the quality of you got to, you know, bring it out from, and from its emergence from the hiddenness of the soul. You got to think it. You got to meditate upon it. At the same time, it's a gift that is something beyond I could reach. It is something that is gifted to us that is a part of the world of Atsilus and therefore it has that quality um, as a result. So it's the best, if you recall, we have been, we've spoken previously, when we spoke in chapter 43 about the two types of love, we spoke about two types of love. One is that you use your mind, and the other one is that you just reveal the natural state of your heart, of your soul. Um, and here we have both coming together. We're revealing the natural state of the soul, because this is something that is gifted to us, in inheritance to us. The nature of the soul but at the same time we're using the our minds to bring out its emergence from its hiddenness so it has the two different qualities as a result and therefore um unique form of love unique form of love any questions or thoughts on that i know now that anybody on this before we continue check the following class actually today's class this was from yesterday shabbos a reminder on facebook and instagram if you have a question two question marks first and then um, ask your question so that i know indeed it is a question as opposed to uh, you know there's a lot of conversation that goes back and forth over here which is amazing by the way i gotta tell you it's beautiful um Clubhouse, anybody to share? It definitely is a higher awareness that um, is a higher kind of love when we realize that God is everything in the source of our very existence. It's something to contemplate yes. every day. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and it, it and again, it has the two qualities over here. On one hand, it's 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 a gift, and therefore it's a um, has the divine light and connection 
of the world of Atsilis, which is the world of emanation. And at the same time, there is my meditative um, meditation of it, which means my engagement, my involvement to bring that which is an, a, a gift, an inheritance in our in the makeup of our soul, that it should emerge from its uh, deep recesses of the soul and should it emerge um, as a reality, as a sense that we truly have. Whether it's only a mental thing, and I know there's m mental capacity that we have, that we are just aware of that, and even if it doesn't come into your heart, that you really feel it. It still has wings and it flies. Very good. Let me see. I know now. Anybody has I know now that can share? Um, God is how we are here and we have inherent hunger for God. Same as the desire for food. And as such, we should crave for life as a result. Of the same that's interesting you know um the real reason why we crave other things if we dig deep is because we ultimately crave a connection to god we sometimes think that it's the external thing that we want whether it's the food whether it's the experience whether it's some you know kind of pleasure um but really What's behind that and what's deeper, so when we recognize, is our desire to be connected. Because when we're connected to the divine, then we feel whole, complete, um, purposeful. And the, gap the gaping holes of the soul are filled with that connection. Yes, very good. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Um, thank you. Very good. Okay, we conclude now the 44th chapter. And the Alter Rebbe says that, yes, we have these two types of love that are an inheritance to the soul. The fact that the very soul recognizes that God is its only reality, its only for form of vitality, its only truth and all it wants is that connection period and it doesn't want to be disconnected from that likewise likewise at the same time um, the other kind of love that god is my father in other words the soul has an inherent um realization of the, the fact that god is our father and just like a child wants to be connected to a parent and not only wants to be connected to a parent but is ready to give up for the sake of the parent because the love is greater for the parent than life itself in this metaphor of the child. So likewise, the soul's desire to be connected and not to be disconnected for, from God is greater than the life itself. So with that notion um, that this is something intrinsic, the ultimate says something interesting now. I mean, he always says something interesting, but he throws a curveball. You know what the curveball is? So, well, that's amazing. But you know what? The original kind of love that we spoke about in chapter 43, which is about not about your soul's connection to God, right? But about you contemplating about your relationship to God, about God's greatness in the world as creator. That he rise, that he is, you know, not limited to just the fact that I have him in my heart and soul, but God is found within creation, and truly understanding the evolution of spiritual to physical, to understand the spiritual worlds, the world of emanation, atzilus, bria, yitzira, asiya, and understand the, the ten divine attributes, and to truly meditate and contemplate and bring about a what he calls a fiery love of God as opposed to what we've been speaking till now is not a fiery kind of love it is 
metaphorically, like calm waters. Let me explain. And here I'm going to segue to human relationships. And from the human relationships, we'll be able to understand divine relationships. There are two types of love that we have because there's two types of relationships that we have. That which is analogous to calm waters and that which is analogous to fiery uh, fire. <laughs> A fiery flame. We'll start off with the um, calm waters. Calm waters is just like, you know, a love that's just natural. It's there, as we have been speaking about, that God is my father. Well, it is, so in, in human relationships, it is a sibling relationship. It's natural. It's just there. Um, it is something that we feel comfortable with, right? You know, except for when you have problems within the family. But think about it. I know when my kids get together, and I'm very blessed, extremely blessed, it's from, aside from the fact, thank God, having 10 kids, many grandchildren, um, they are so comfortable with each other and love their company to be with each other. It's beautiful. Ah, oh, it's just, why? Because they grew up together. So they're the same, you know, they have the same parents. They, they know each other. There's probably not too many surprises. And it's um, just calm waters. Ah, can there be arguments? Can be there problems? Yeah, obviously. But the nature of this love is, it's just there. And it expresses itself in the familiarity that is um comfortable that's comfortable and that's the way it's supposed to be so that's the way it is with parents children with parents siblings probably the best way to give such a metaphor it is an inherent love that's naturally there it doesn't take so much to you know kind of bring it out because of the comfort that there is, the familiarity that there is. So that's one kind of love, the natural and calm waters. Then there's another type of love that's not natural. That's between, um, what I mean not natural, hmm. I don't know if that's the right word. It's not inherent, it's not an inherent love. A guy meets a girl. They get married. That kind of love is a fiery flame, right? That's what we call that kind of. Uh, now, that fiery flame, what, what is that a metaphor of the intensity of it? The closer you come, the more intense it is. Now, let, let, just for the sake of the metaphor and they understand the relationships between siblings there should not be intensity of, of, of a passion in the relationship. Calm waters, natural. Shouldn't be a passion, God forbid. That's very unhealthy. And likewise, between husband and wife, it shouldn't be calm waters. Just taken for granted. It's there, natural. It has to have the element of a fiery flame. Now that fiery flame, just like a flame flickers, right? So likewise, this, this kind of um, uh, relationship is one that is brings passion. What's passion do? Passion is because there's a distance, you want to get close. That's what passion is, right? You don't have that with your sibling. Why? Because you are close. But being that, you know, men are from Chochma and women are from Bina, not from ours and Venus, much further distance. <laughs> Chochma and Bina they come from two different makeups of soul. So they're not inherently connected. 
Yes, two halves of one soul, one uh, from getting married and so on, absolutely. But um, there's a natural separation. And because of that natural separation, what that creates, distance creates passion. When you have the closest, you, you know, the passion isn't there as, as the distance creates. So that distance creates the that you want to come close from coming close then getting too familiar is not healthy you need to create the distance again distance in the sense of having respect and giving the space to your spouse right um but then that distance further creates the passion to come back together and that is in a human relationship. There's a lot that we can discuss about this, and perhaps in our discussion we can talk more about it, but I'm using that as a metaphor to understand the difference between the two loves that we spoke about that are calm waters, that God is my very soul, my very life, and he's my father. Those two are inherent to the soul, and therefore they're like calm waters, they're naturally there. The challenge with that is it doesn't create a passion. It doesn't create a fire in the individual. Fire or passion is created because of distance. Calm waters is because of closeness. So there is, you know, it's calm relationship. It's just still, it's just there. It's natural siblings. Husband and wife, there has to be the passion there. That passion is, well, because there is a difference between man and woman. And that difference creates a distance, which is good, in order that that can create a passion to bring together. And as close as you come together, then you realize, I thought I got her. <laughs> I see she's still beyond. <laughs> There's intellectually, emotionally also, that there creates some kind of distance. And that distance, not, not an unhealthy distance, a distance that, because of creating a space for the other, but then that distance is a, creates the passion to come back together. Whether it's coming back together, you know, in, in relations, um, which is the ultimate idea of how that distance creates the passion and therefore the desire to unite and become one. So in our relationship with God, this is the idea of meditating and thinking about God's greatness. Not thinking about how I have an inherent connection with him. That's the calm, still waters, which is beautiful, but it doesn't create a passion right? A, a child doesn't have a passion for their father. They have a desire to be bonded and connected and not to be disconnected. So this kind of uh, love that we're talking about doesn't create a passion to connect to God, not a fiery love, but the calm still waters. But when we meditate and think about God and his greatness, right? That, it, 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 that creates a passion. Why? Because the distance. He's so great. And I'm so small compared. <laughs> right? That creates a distance, which in, therefore creates a passion. Because you want to connect. You want to come close. So it creates a fire in your soul. There's something superior over this, of this, than the calm still waters of the God is my very soul, my very being. He is my father. There's something greater, superior over this kind of love. Because again, the fiery flame that it creates, the passion that it creates. Similar to the Alta says, to the excellence of gold over silver as we'll understand more in chapter uh, 50 when we discuss that, but 
gold, not only does it, you know, ounce for ounce have more value, but it's got this glimmer to it. It's got this shine to it that makes it very attractive. So that's a metaphor for us to appreciate the glimmer, the shine that there is in this contemplating not about my relationship to God and it, right, but about God and his greatness, him as creator, appreciating creation, understanding God within creation. So again, what that does is create a, a distance. Because anytime you, you know, think about someone's greatness, you know, and, and and how much greater they are than you, that naturally creates a distance that you want to overcome that distance to get close. So, like in, in human relations between husband and wife, and here we're talking about our relationship with God. So when we contemplate that, that greatness of God, it will create that passionate fire flame within us that we want to overcome that distance to be connected. And in conclusion of the chapter, the Altar Davis says, besides, this is the whole purpose of man, is that we should know the glory of God, his majestic splendor of his greatness. Each person, each person according to their capacity, as the Zohar says, begin the moon lay, that in order that we should know God. Right? So to have a connection to God that he's my father, that's not knowing him. That's not about knowing him. That's about my intrinsic connection with him. My innate connection with him. But to know God, to know him, not as my father, but him. In every aspect that I can know of him, everything that I'm capable of knowing of him, his greatness, well, that's going to create a, a strong passion because there's going to be a big bridge that we need to gap because of the distance, the, the healthy distance. After all, he's God. I'm not. So that will naturally create that sense of distance that creates a passion that you want to now come close. Powerful idea. So, so not only do we need to develop a love for God that is intrinsic, that is inherent to the soul, as we spoke about these two forms of love, you know, that it says we also have to work on another kind of love, that fiery passion. Now, in human relations, you know, it's one or the other. It should not be both. Don't create with your siblings a fiery passion for them. God forbid. Or for your parents. And likewise for your spouse. Don't create or don't develop like this calm, still waters of the natural, you know, good friends. That's good, you know, husband, wife great that they'd be not just good friends but best friends amazing but there needs to be that sense of distance that creates a passion in order to come closer and connect any questions any comments on this powerful idea Hey, Debra, God bless you. Um, Denise is asking a question. Is Abbas Israel calm waters type of love? Yes. Why? Because my soul is a Jewish soul. And every other Jew's soul is a Jewish soul. So there's a natural bond that we have you ever been in the airport and you meet a fellow jew you instantaneously feel a bond hi you know and you start to conversation. why it's natural 
It's the calm, still waters of the bond that we naturally have, right? Because we feel connected. So that's what, what it is. Good question. Thank you for asking that, Denise. Um, okay. I know now that who can offer that on this second part. I might see you didn't for okay. Um, Instagrammers, anybody? No, I don't see any questions or any comments. Anybody on Clubhouse? Sina, Marcy, Aviva, Hanna, Blaz, I don't know what, uh, Michael. Wow, I would have thought we'd have lots of conversation on this. Davida, did I miss anybody? Uh, Marcy. Marcy, please share with us. I was just thinking about all all the different types of love. And I realize it's it's a metaphor. It doesn't you know, it doesn't approach the reality of the complexity of feelings of love. Because I mean, you were you know, you were talking about like how well you wouldn't have, you know, a passionate relationship with your sibling, but there are passions that are not sexual, lustful in nature, you know. I mean that's just anger and, and other complex emotions, but, you know, uh, protectiveness and, you know, other things that are, that are deeply passionately engaged, but not, you know, weird. <laughs> right. I get you, Marcy. <laughs> um, and so, like, I don't know, to reduce love to a, 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 a two-pronged definition seems very restrictive. Um, I, I don't think, I mean, when you think about, like, the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov and, and how, you know, how he taught to, to love God, actually, like, it didn't feel like, it feels like to say there's only two ways, there's only two kinds of levels, feels very constricting, constrained. So, thank you for sharing that. Um, what we're saying here, now that, you know, we're going to learn actually more kinds of love next chapters and uh, in the next coming chapters but they are all based on a two fundamental types of love that's the point over here the point is is the expression of that love is is i think perhaps what you might be referring to in the restrictions um is yes there is uh, not the just the two we spoke about and now the third one of uh, uh, actually we spoke about four altogether um till now we'll speak more of more but there's two fundamental types of love the calm waters meaning inherent why do you love because you are inherently have that love within you because of the nature of your soul so like uh, denise asked about abed israel about loving another jew um the mitzvah that we have is an ex because we have the same soul um same soul connection so it's an inherent love it's not something we need to create we're not creating it um that kind of love it, it's there that's one and that's the that's a predominant one but then there's one that's not there so to speak you kind of produce it um you need to produce it and that is your awareness of god's greatness right you're, you're producing it because you're becoming aware of it and because of that awareness it creates the distance in other words at the same time you know 
God is your father, but now at this moment, the the feeling is not that he's my father. The feeling is of his greatness and the distance I have from him that creates a passion to come close. So that's, uh, I, I don't think that limits, that's just giving an understanding of the two two natures of love, two basic natures of love. The, uh, the way they're expressed, we'll have more expressions of it. Um, beyond what we've explained till now. Um, that's one point. Second point, um, you mentioned about, or actually might, might have been your first point, about um, with siblings, that you might have a passion about something, but it's not a, a pat, you're right. you're right. It doesn't mean you can't show passion, but you're not showing passion because of a distance. The passion you're expressing is because of a closeness. But when distance is created, and because of that distance you want to get close, that's what creates a, a passion. So, you know, this is, by the way, just uh, as we're talking about the, the, the discussion, that's the, the laws of family purity, of mikvah. They are not laws of um, that are uh what's what's the word i'm looking for are imposed upon the relationship no the fact that a husband and wife can't be with each other at a certain point in the month of the menstrual cycle is not an imposition i mean you may feel it's an imposition but that's not what it is it's actually a reflection of the relationship there's a time that you're on a time that you're off a time that you're close and a kind that you are physically distant. Shouldn't be, you know, uh, uh, I mean, even emotionally, you're a li you're more distant because you're not gonna express the passion at that moment. Uh, you shouldn't feel disconnected from your spouse at that time when you're not physically together, but there will be not as a passionate emotional feeling at that time because you have a distance. The point of that distance is ultimately to create that passion to be able to come back together and then come back together um you separate again why are you separating because each time the passion can become stronger each time the uh, the coming together can be deeper as a result of that and it's not because it's not a relationship of being familiar because it's not intrinsic not intrinsic in the in the sense, I mean, it is two halves of one soul, so it soulfully, but not, you know, lovingly, shall we say, <laughs> in that sense. I hope that was clear. Did, did that clarify yeah, anything, Raji? Okay, thank you. Uh, Davida is asking if you are estranged, oops, from someone. There's a distance and no love. How does that create passion? Distance doesn't have to create passion. You know, you feel distant from a person. Uh, not all distance is meant to create passion. The only passion that's meant to create is between a husband and wife because there is a connection between them and, 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 and there should be a sense of fire in the relationship and it shouldn't be just, you know, best buds. Um, it needs to be more than that. Um, so distance between friends, because what you, you know, you don't connect with them anymore. Okay. You don't connect with them anymore, but that's, you know, it's not meant to create a passion. So, so I'm not clear on, um, why distance doesn't mean there has to be passion. Uh, Ken. Ken, Ken, Ken. Where is your question? Ken, can you repost it? Because, oh, here it is. Okay. When you say that our mitzvahs get wings, does that mean that an angel carries that? Um, <laughs> good question, Ken. Actually, when we do a mitzvah this way, it's greater than angels. Angels are created beings. Our wings to the mitzvah go to the divine attributes of God and they're one with God. So they're much, much incredibly and infinitely greater than the the wings of a 
of an angel than our created beings. So no, they're not carried by the angels. I mean, uh, they're, they're way beyond the angels. The angels are created beings. And this is um, connected to the divine. And they're for eternal. And they're for eternal. Good. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, for that question. Um, okay. Um, it was regards for those who are estranged family members. So estranged family members, you will have an inherent connection with them. Calm waters, right? You're not supposed to create a passion. Now, again, that doesn't mean you can't act, as Marcy rightfully said, that doesn't mean you, know, you don't get passionate about, you know, you, one of your siblings is doing something and, and you are, actually, I had this the other day of <laughs> speaking with someone who was so upset with it and passionate about their sibling, what they had done, had done to their, you know, to the family, like unwittingly, they just did something very foolish and was very passionate about it. Um, you're right, it wasn't. It was passion. It wasn't uh, any uh, any sexual connotation to it. Um, so w that's not the kind of passion we're talking about. We're talking about a passion of feeling the distance, and you want to overcome that distance to become close. Here was a passionate, not for the person. It was passionate. I mean, passion because of the person, but not for the person. Right? It wasn't passion for the person. It was an inherent love that she had for her brother. And that she spoke about the idea that, that what happened in a passionate way. So very different. So yes, you can speak very passionately about something, but it's about something. It's not about the person that you're having the passion for. Here we're talking about having a passion for God because of the distance that you feel, because you think about God as creator, think about his greatness, and therefore that creates a distance because in fact we are distant from any sense of god and his capability of being omnipotent omniscient and so on and so forth so i hope that um davida i hope that uh, it explained it and marcy i hope i gave greater clarification to your very good point so i want to add something to this sure please do so to qualify what you're saying about love, our love for God is very unique. It's not like the love that we have for any other human being. And it's really hard to, um, you know, talk about it because we tend to relate to love the way we relate to other people. Um, but the love of God is so vastly different from the love we have and the relationships that we have to any other human or any other being. So when you say our love of God is both a fiery flame and as calm as water, these two types of love exist as part of our human relationship with God only, not with other people. Right. With other people, it'll be one or the other. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. Very true. Uh, it'll be one or the other. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, we use the, the human dimension in order that we can better understand our relationship and our love for God and the different capabilities or different uh, aspects of it. Absolutely. Very nice. Uh, anybody else? Marcy, Bacia, Sina, Viva. Um, anybody else something to share? I know now. Can I get a new I know for this one? Mm. Okay. Marcy, you wanted to say something? I was going to say, I know now to look for the love in relationships in the way I connect to people and to God. Very good. Thank you. And, and, and you know, because now we have a, 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 a more profound, deeper understanding uh, the concepts, the different concepts of love, um, that awareness is definitely going to help us in our connection with God and in our connection with every uh, other person that we have a loving relationship with. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. 
All right, Michelle has a question, but no question mark. Okay, let me find that if I can. Michelle, would the passion be on the act of the person? Not clear what you mean on the act of the person. You mean the person acted in a certain way and that created a passion. Yeah, of course that can be. Um, we're talking about, when we speak about passion here, we're talking about a passion for the person rather than a passion uh, about something that the person did, right? Two different things. So in a husband and wife relationship, there should be a, a passion for the spouse. For the siblings, you can be passionate about something that ha about your siblings, but it's, an about, it's not a passion for them. That's a natural love that we have that is being expressed. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Folks, a reminder, tonight uh, we have a um, Torah Studies class, 6.30 Eastern Time, um, or Daylight Savings Time, perhaps. Uh, come and join. It's going to be very, actually, might be a bit, somewhat of a continuation of some of the thoughts that we have here. Um, actually, there, there will be some. Uh, yeah, it is somewhat connected. <laughs> It'd be interesting. And that's to, tonight, 6.30. That's on Chabad ZK Facebook or on Zoom. Um, uh, we can't put it up over here. Because they don't. Or Zoom, you could, actually. Davida, if you can put the Zoom, that would be great. Okay. And uh, come and join us. All right. Um, Vilma, please close up shop for us thank you all for joining and participating with uh, rabbi ronnie fine on chabad of facebook uh, and uh, chabad of clubhouse if you'd like to follow R rabbi ronnie please do and the chabad of uh, clubhouse you can click on the green house and follow us for more discussions thank you so much rabbi and thank you everyone thank you everybody have a wonderful day Shalom.